Hello everyone, Armando here with DLC Model Builders. Uh, I am uh, in the process of doing a build up of the USS Sulaco, Conestoga class uh, marine transport carrier from the movies Aliens and Alien 3. Um, fairly simple build up, I just, use, I just follow the instructions and put them together. Um, and uh, primered and applied the first coat of paint which is basically a custom mixed light battleship gray. Now my plan will be on this guy to use as a guide the build up by Ian Lawrence of uh, Ian Lawrence Galleries. He did a fantastic uh, job with his Sulaco for a client build uh, a couple years ago and uh, He's got it up on his uh, website. Let me pull it up so you guys can check it out yourselves. Here it is. Again, it's uh, Ian Lawrence Models. And um, he's got a whip of the uh, buildup. Here's his uh, Sulaco. He does a complex... Uh, Aztec patterning, which uh, really sells the uh, the effect of the paneling, uh, which I think is essential to make this ship look in scale. This is actually not a very big kit. Uh, measures, I don't know, about 11 inches, maybe 12 at the most. Um, this is supposed to be a huge ship, and on screen it looks that way, but this kit is not very big. I, I I thought about lighting it, but uh, the uh, screenshots show it to be completely uh, dark. It runs dark. It doesn't have any lights. And I thought if I were to add some lights, uh, just use some artistic license, they wouldn't have looked in scale because uh, I couldn't have made them really small unless I used very tiny fiber optics. And where would I put them? So I decided to just go with the... Uh, with the uh, screen accurate representation and, and make them dark. I will build a base of some kind. I have a potential base right here. Um, and I'll, I'll light it from the base up to, to create some lighting effects. That's a good suggestion by uh, Bob Busking. Uh, uh, I would like to come up with something similar to what Mr. Lawrence came up with as far as a base. He created this out of a uh, clear acrylic and sculpted the uh, the stand, which just uh, holds it up in the back very nicely. I think that's a great idea. I wish I could come up with something like that from someone, um, but if I don't, I'll I'll try and do something similar. As you can see, he uh, takes the very tiny drop ship and hangs it with a uh, nylon from the ship. Here's the, uh, here's the dropship so you get an idea how tiny it is. That's my finger next to it. I've got it set on the, on the base here next to a couple of other things. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to lose it, obviously. But uh, maybe I'll do something like that with it as well. But anyway, that's my Sulaco. I didn't take you guys through the uh, putting together of it because it was pretty straightforward. I just followed the instructions. I. I Put it together before I did anything to it. There really isn't that much seam work to do. Uh, most of it is hidden by paneling. It looks like it's part. There's there's some here. I didn't do a lot of work on it, as you can see. I'll just try and disguise it and make it look like part of the ship. Um, I guess I was kind of lazy. Hopefully the Asticking will uh, simulate some of it. I'll do some washing on it as well. Mr. Lawrence uses a uh, successive uh, dirt washes over to attenuate the uh, the contrast between the different paneling squares that he paints on so it doesn't look too obvious it looks more like a actual paneling on a huge ship and um, hopefully that'll do it I'm, I'm looking forward to it uh, ship is kinda cool so anyway that's my USS Sulaco and I'll keep you guys apprised Talk to you later. Progress on my Sulaco. Uh, I've gotten a lot done and uh, let's go through it, shall we? I've 
continue to steadily apply more and more of the little tape pieces to uh, attempt the paneling effect that uh, Ian Lawrence at ianlawrencemodels.com uh, achieved for his build. Uh, it's a beautiful build and I'm trying to emulate, emulate it as best as I can. Uh, that's tedious work and I'll probably apply some more of those tonight. I'm by no means finished. Once I do, I will apply the second coat of paint which will be darker than the first. As for the base, uh, I've basically completed basically the base. Haha. <laughs> and uh, what I did was I took an oval plaque from Michaels and stained it black. As you can see, it's just standard wood. Uh, again, I used Ian Lawrence's build as a guide. He did a really neat cutout with clear acrylic in this shape, and I emailed him to see if there was any chance he might build one for me or had one left over or, or point me in the direction of someone who could do it. Uh, Unfortunately, he never responded. I guess he's either busy or he's retired. He did mention on his uh, website that he's not doing any uh, any um, commission work anymore. So I understand. Uh, I tried uh, getting uh, the gentleman over at tshobby.com, Flux Dimensions on eBay, who I bought the Cylon Raider base from, uh, which I really like, to see if he could possibly come up with something custom that... Um, would approach this but he says he needs a model to measure it and again I understand so I decided well what the hell I'll, 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 I'll draw the uh, design on a piece of clear styrene that I have laying around here acrylic and cut it out with a jigsaw and I I did the first one came out a little too wide the second one was perfect and then I decided to get creative I took a piece of leftover mask from Jerry's masks for the uh, floor of the shuttle bay of the refit and I drew the Weyland Yutani logo guiding myself from this uh, plaque that I bought from my future uh, Nostromo build. Uh, I would have liked to have put property of Weyland Yutani Corporation building better worlds but uh, those letters are just too small they, they wouldn't have come out good for the reverse mass that I needed although I am probably gonna acquire one of those uh, uh, mask cutters uh, as per Keith Purcell's recommendation. Thank you Keith, you're making me spend more money. <laughs> um, and uh, supposedly you can make masks with it, it's pretty nice so I'll probably be looking into that possibility. But for now what I did was I simply used uh, rulers and I drew the uh, logo, cut out the uh, mask, applied the mask to the uh, Clear, clear acrylic and then I used my small sandblaster that I bought for the Bates Mansion a couple of years ago using the this is the air eraser it's basically a mini sandblaster and I blasted the uh, the area and then removed the mask and voila I have the logo right on it very very cool um, feels smooth as silk too uh, I put two 8mm LEDs and bent them slightly to give a spotlight effect and I put a blue LED strip on here to give it a bluish tinge uh, since when it goes through space that's sort of the impression you get. And then for power I used four CR2016 batteries, uh, two in this casing and two in this one and hooked them up in series to come up with a total of 12 volts and when I turn it on boom beautiful uh, spotlight effect on the Sulaco and uh, the bluish tinge let me turn it off and uh, sort of prop them up there um, so you guys get an idea of how it looks and it looks pretty cool i to be real careful about this because uh, it's not quite ready to hold it up yet, but this gives you an idea right here. Um, I've emailed Jerry 
Hedgecock over at HGA Model Works to have them build a small one and a half by three plaque uh, with the uh, registry and the name and, and class of ship on it to add a little touch of uh, identification to the uh, ship. Um, and then I just need to finish the paintwork on it. And I'll be able to call this puppy done. So coming right along on it. And uh, hopefully I'll be done in the next few days. So anyway, that's my Sulaco build so far. Uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. First application of masking is finished. I completed applying tape masks all, all over the ship and I went ahead and I took the same shade I used and I darkened it slightly with some black and I went ahead and coated the ship. Now the next step is to apply more masks some of them overlapping these, some not and then darkening the color a little bit more and again painting again. I might do it a uh, fourth time uh, eventually the idea is to get overlapping panels which are different shades and then uh, hitting it with some kind of a wash that will attenuate the difference between the paneling. So we'll continue the process and I'll uh, come back when uh, I've got more done. Okay, for the most part the Sulaco is finished and uh, I want to go ahead and go through with you uh, the process of how I did the uh, paneling. Uh, I am quite pleased with the way it came out. As you can see the paneling um, does show up but in a more subtle way than the uh, initial images or the initial uh, impression did and I'll tell you how I did that uh, got the dropship hanging, I used a thin uh, sewing string I may change that, I ordered a very thin invisible string uh, that measures about 0.1 millimeter which is supposed to be transparent uh, the fishing string I have is 0.3 millimeter, it was too thick and uh, I didn't like the way it looked uh, I used the yellow Sulaco lettering from the Alien 3 version on this side and on the other side I used the black lettering from the Aliens movie. Not as easily seen. In fact it's almost invisible. <laughs> The lighting in my office has always been poor. You guys know that if you've watched my videos. Gonna have to do something about it. There it is. Uh, okay. So anyway, um, as I explained in the previous segment, I, I did a series of maskings. Uh, two sets of maskings. One, one layer of small little squares after I'd applied the original lighter battleship gray uh, coating to the to the model. Then I darkened it, sprayed that over that, and then I added another layer of little squares and darkened it some more to reach the final very dark color. Um, after I did that I removed all the masks and the contrast was rather sharp, uh, too much. In fact I didn't like it, but when I looked at the pictures by Ian Lawrence uh, he had the same issue, uh, although his ship overall was much lighter. Uh, he didn't darken it as much. Actually, I like my tone better. I, I like it darker like this. But um, uh, I knew that he'd applied multiple washes and that he he'd, he'd uh, attenuated that way, attenuated it that way. But I still wanted to uh, do something more than just have those three shades of color. So I I took an index card and cut out several different square and rectangular patterns on it, small patterns, and I used it as a as a um, movable mask as it were. I'd, I would I would uh, hold it over an area and, and, and spray uh, and what I did was I took an, 
intermediate gray, uh, lighter than the dark, but darker than the light. And I sprayed it over several of the areas that were that had squares that were very, very light. You can probably see one here to attenuate the dark, the lighter uh, squares even more. Uh, that helped tremendously. I, uh, I really like what it did. Then I took, uh, I created a wash with the uh, secret weapon uh, uh, powdered uh, washes that I've purchased and used on previous builds and dipped it in water and created a wash and applied it over the whole model. It was a bit too uh, watery for me so after that I took that as well as the exhaust um, black and the ash gray powders and I applied them with my finger onto the model and then squirted some of the distilled water onto them and then just with my finger I rubbed it over the model and the effect was was quite satisfactory I, I, I love what it did it, it, it created a wash and and dulled down the brightness of the squares you can't tell here you're getting a lot of shine from the light but uh, when you look at the kit from further away it really does look like a <clears throat> it, it's it's got paneling all over the place and and that's exactly what I wanted I, I'm, I'm really pleased with the way it looks um, as I said for the most part the kit is finished I'm, I'm waiting on Jerry's plaque he's he's gonna be working on that this weekend hopefully I'll get it by next week it'll go someplace here and like I said I'm gonna wait and see what those strings that I ordered look like and possibly replace them. This one's a bit too visible. Um, hopefully that one will be thinner and more invisible. Uh, let me show you the uh, the lighting. There we go. Again I'm getting a lot of uh, overexposure from my camera it isn't quite as bright as that although it is bright and I'm thinking maybe maybe I'll I'll uh, I'll wrap something around the sides to make it more of a spotlight effect which is what I was looking for to begin with the uh, Whaling yutani uh, logo looks great with a blue um, uh, strip of light underneath um, and uh, as you can see, the 12 volts from the four uh, CR, um, what are they, 2016s or 2316s, uh, is more than enough to, to light up the model very nicely. So as you can see, the, I'm getting a nice uh, spotlight effect from the bottom. But uh, the model really looks cool in person, especially. I, I wish you guys could see it in person. It uh, the paneling really <laughs> is striking. Uh, I love the effect. Uh, if I do another one, I'll probably use even more masks and panels uh, and um, and more washes to e make it even more uh, mixed in. But uh, for being the first time I've tried this technique, I'm, I'm extremely pleased. Um, anyway, I'll have a final video when I have the plaque so you guys get to look at that. And... Uh, uh, then I'll post all of the videos onto my website. And um, you guys can check it out and let me know what you think. Anyway, talk to you later. Back with the uh, finale for the USS Sulaco. I finally got the plaque from Jerry today. And I am psyched. It is beautiful, as you can see. That's the uh, camera reflecting off of it. Sorry about that. He's got the uh, bluish uh, coloration on the lettering. It's got the registry on it. I also, a couple of weeks ago, got the uh, nearly invisible fishing string that I ordered online. Here's the uh, roll. It is extremely thin, 0.12 millimeters, I think. As you can see, it, it's a lot better than the uh, sewing string that I was using from far away. The dropship looks like it's floating in midair, which is perfect. So that's my Sulaco completed. This feels good to get this thing uh, on the shelf.
and that's where it'll go. Anyway, little rotational picture there. I'll leave you with the shot like in the movie as it headed towards the camera. Of course it didn't have a Cylon Raider behind it but oh well. <laughs> anyway. Thanks for watching.